Hello and welcome to Mark My Words. Now I've got an awesome, awesome uh, episode now uh, that I'm doing with Rob. Uh, we're going to talk about what's changing, how the world has changed, how to take advantage of it, uh, and, and this new paradigm we're coming into, what the opportunities, because there are going to be loads, what they're going to be. Um, so welcome. Hi, it's Rob Moore here, and I'm with my business partner, Mark Homer. Uh, we're doing a bit of an emergency Ask Me Anything live. Uh, now, we're broadcasting this out to <laughs> my followers on my page, to Mark's followers on his page, into the progressive property community. Uh, and so I'm going to try and dance <coughs> between these platforms and take as many questions as we can. As you can imagine, we've been getting <coughs> hundreds of questions about business, about the property market and the implications of isolation and quarantine and how to continue to trade through this and how to keep your businesses going and the changing in the property training space. There is a lot to cover, but what we thought we'd do, rather than just come out and make statements, we thought we'd make ourselves available for, um, we'll, we'll be able to do up to for about an hour um, now, so I've probably got to finish at two o'clock because I'm doing a, a live stream talk at 2.15 at Expert Empires. So I will see if I can refresh the pages and find your questions, but anything you'd like to ask us about property, about business, about things that you feel might uh, be happening right now uh, that you're unsure about. You could also ask us about our own company and our own plans on how we're going to navigate through this time. All questions are on the table. So yeah, I can see that we're live uh, in Progressive. I can see that. So uh, I'll keep refresh refreshing the page. Uh, this one thing for sure, <coughs> and that is I have never seen anything like this in my lifetime. Uh, I wonder if there's been anything like this since a hundred years ago when we had uh, the war. Um, so it's certainly unprecedented times. I think it's okay to feel like you're maybe not sure what you're doing. I think it's okay to feel a bit lost and challenged. Um, but one thing is for sure, you don't want that to last very long. Uh, and I think that it's vital that you double down. So if you're, for example, um, in some kind of training or you're some kind of online business, you want to put double the amount of content out there. Uh, I think if you are in business, you want to be doing double the hours. Um, I think, of course, you've got to be hustling with looking after your clients and managing, looking after them and also managing your suppliers. Um, Mark, would you say you've worked this hard in, in, a, in a little while? I don't think I've worked this hard in a decade. Um, you know, I'm, I'm getting up every morning uh, at about 5.15, 5.30 uh, and uh, exercising, coming into work, getting a load of stuff done before anyone gets in. Uh, I'm on, you know, building site uh, part of the day. I'm in the progressive office trying to sort out all the issues uh, for the rest of the day. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're moving into a new paradigm. This is a whole new world. Um, loads of opportunities are going to present themselves um, for the ready um, and those who are willing to put the work and the sacrifice in uh, to, to, to oh, clearly, it's going to take a little, a little bit of elbow grease, but to learn from others who understand where the opportunities are, what to do, how to do it. Um, the sort of stuff that people are going to do in the next, I don't know, year, two years, is going to determine their existence, their lives, their businesses for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so this is one of those pivotal moments. Um, it's, it's critical you get it right, uh, and, it, and it's critical you seize the opportunity because it's, uh, it's appearing. Now, I wrote the book <coughs> Life Leverage four years ago. And Mark and I have had periods where we've not really been that active in our training business, or we've had properties and they're, <coughs> they're now run and managed. I've certainly had my moments where I've been semi-retired and traveled all around, all around the world with my son playing his, his golf. You won't hear anything like that from me and Mark for at least the <coughs> next three to six months. I think it's absolutely okay and vital to put the graft in, put the work in and do what needs to be done because I think it's the uncertainty that is the biggest. Like Mark and I know what cash we've got. We've liquidated some assets. We're trying to be heavy on cash. We can work out what our overheads are and how long we've got burn rate, how many months mm. and run all sorts of different scenarios. 
Um, but if you don't know how long this is going to last, four weeks, now as they say 12 weeks, you don't know if it's the rest of the year. Of course, it's the uncertainty that, that wobbles you. Um, there's been a lot of upsides. So Mark and I have talked about this a lot. Uh, no wasted time. Much more productive. Things happen fast, fast, fast. I had a meeting in the meeting room behind us uh, and um, four of my staff sat down and basically said, this is like the early days of Progressive. Um, now, look, there's not a load of excitement running around this office. Don't get me wrong. There's some fear. Um, but there is also some paradoxical excitement because things are happening quickly. We're launching new products and we're getting them out within a week, whereas they might have taken three years before. Um, and we're all a lot more focused now, a lot more productive. I get loads of WhatsApp messages and I have no guilt now about not replying to some. Because you just have to prioritise your time and you have to do what you have to do. And we've got lots of clients, a big community, we've got big buildings, you know, we've got banks, we've got a lot of responsibility. And as such, you've got to get done what you can get done. So let me have a refresh and see what questions we've got uh, and see where we take it from here. Um, okay, so I'll try and do them just as I see them. Um, so this is from Rodney, uh, and this is, can you see mid-developments mid not being able to exit due to probable down valuations, and will bridges be understanding? Yeah, so I think that's a, uh, a possibility. Um, you know, if uh, banks, uh, you know, become a little bit more, uh, or become more sort of uh, cautious, um, and also uh, property values don't stay at their current levels, they come off. Uh, then, you know, developments at the end, sort of refinancing them or selling them or whatever, there could be challenges. Um, I was there in 08, I traded through this. Um, we weren't necessarily doing big developments, we were doing lots of sort of terraced houses, you know, smaller refurbs, that sort of thing. But I watched what, what happened. Um, certainly mid-development, generally, as long as the bank is well capitalised. And remember, I'm not saying none of the banks are going to get into trouble, because it's possible. Um, but they're going into this in a very, very different place from where they were in 2008. Um, the um, the, the um, FCA has made them go through a whole stack of stress tests and every couple of years you see them going through these Armageddon tests. So I think they're holding a lot more capital and clearly this is not a, a crisis of the banks. That's not where it's starting. It's a, it's a, a sort of medical um, and a, a not a financial crisis. Um, so what I'd say is if you're sort of halfway through a development, uh, I think the bank's going to want you to finish it because they're in a really bad position if they decide to pull the plug. Um, and clearly at the end, um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be other types of products, I don't know, bridging or, you know, maybe the bank that you're with already um, will sort of, uh, you know, let you sort of go on to some sort of other product, maybe at a higher interest rate. Um, just until the runoff gets sorted and you know maybe you can sort of get refinanced. So we were there in 08, I saw this, um, loads of my mates were with RBS um, and um, RBS was lending to all of them, all the developers uh, and they tried to get the money back and lots of people said no uh, and as long as they were running the site properly or the units were rented out um, they just sort of left it um, didn't crystallise it. Uh, they put the interest rate up on a lot of them to persuade them to leave. Uh, and then eventually a lot of them sort of managed to sort of refinance. So um, yeah, there'll be, uh, th things will change. The, the, the key thing is um, we were using a lot of buy-to-let mortgages uh, back in sort of 07, 08. We all of a sudden found we couldn't use those anymore because all the rules changed and they suddenly said, you and Rob have got too many properties, we don't want to know you anymore. Um, so I ended up just sort of pounding the streets around London um, and just going to every single commercial lender that I could find to move into that space. And since then, you know, I've borrowed from those sorts of banks. So we're going to come into that sort of period now where the banks that are going to offer you what you want are going to change. And in order to find them, you just need to put a load of work in. And, and you know, I, if I have an issue finding finance um, on, I don't know, developments or, you know, investment finance or whatever, I can see me returning to a situation where I just take the attitude that I'm going to go to, tw I'm going to go 20 banks, I'm going to go on the charm offensive and I'm going to find products that will work for the new world. 
remember that's the sort of maybe more challenging side what's also going to happen is you know you're you're going to be presented with a whole stack of opportunities um, it, not quite yet we're a little bit early but you know opportunities are going to appear all over the place um, so you might lose on something or, or you may make a paper loss um, in terms of your portfolio but you know you can certainly make it up with what, what, what else you buy or what you go into during this period. So a couple of things to add to that um, when Mark said not quite yet for opportunity well a lot of e-commerce sellers their, um, their accounts are at 500%. Yeah. And um, yeah. What I'm talking about, yeah, I'll caveat that. Um, I'm talking about property values. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I'm always thinking about property. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if, you, if you're selling online or you've got a trading business that is, I don't know, supplying stuff online or food or, or whatever, they're going absolutely crazy. Um, and, you know, that's likely con to continue well past when this crisis is over because I, I just think that you know people will uh, there'll be periods where they retrench and they get worried and they don't want to travel as much and all that stuff um, so the opportunity for that is now 100% so I'm getting loads of questions I'm going to try and catch up with them all so what we'll try and do is answer them quite quickly um, Lisa Levine has asked will there be a drop in pro property prices likely none of us can predict we can all say what we think likely um, it could go down at a bad time, i.e. for Mark and I, we're doing a, a, a fairly, well, for us, a big development project and, and we hope they haven't dropped a lot just at the time we're looking to refinance out, but you can't control the prices. Uh, and, you know, when we get out of this, there may be a little, what, the, what do they call it, a dead cat bounce? You know, there might be a, a little bounce back when the, no one's going to want to stay in their house forever. Uh, and I think you'll find, in, I mean, people are already bored and scared. You can see that because there's all the trolls out in force. So I think boredom <laughs> and fear mixed together is actually quite a recipe for, I mean, in Italy, <laughs> they're not staying in their house. They're not doing what they're told. Um, and so I, I do feel maybe in a few weeks time or in the middle of this, people are just going to want to get out again. They want to live a normal life. So obviously none of us know what's go going to happen. Um, but I think that, yeah, prices could get hit and that's opportunities for buying. Um, prices could bounce back. And, and of course, if you're in mid-development, you might hope that's the case. Um, but, but we're all guessing, aren't we? So all we can do is you know, talk about what we think may happen. Uh, what is it? Um, plan for the worst, um, but um, try and uh, think uh, for the best. Uh, and I think that's all you can do right now. I've, I've spoken to two uh, sort of residential house builders uh, who sell their units and both, uh, you know, significant one, very significant. Um, and uh, they're both of the opinion that um, the, the, the sort of sales season now is probably, it, it's probably done summer, autumn. Um, you know, you, 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 you know, you, you probably want to be looking towards the end of the year onwards uh, because uh, not a lot is going to be selling there. So those people want to switch. They need to sort of work out how to rent, um, how to carve their units up to get more rental income um, and, um, you know, to, to, to move their model. The people who sort of move their model, switch, um, you know, gather around others. I know that's difficult at the moment, uh, but gather around others to get knowledge, uh, you know, do sort of online um, teach them, bring themselves up to speed online as well. I think those people are going to prosper um, because uh, there's so much change happening so quickly. So I've just uh, lost the comment, but I can remember it, so I can't say who it's from. But someone has said, you know, that they suffer a bit with procrastination. What um, advice have you got? And I just have to be really direct and honest with you at this point. Um, I think now is this is the cure of procrastination. If ever you needed motivation to get off the fence, to decide on your strategy, to work extra hard, to not make excuses, to not waste time and to get things done and to plough forward, surely it's now. And actually, uh, a big positive coming out of this is it could just push everyone to crack on and get stuff done. Mark and I, um, in the background, have had many courses that we've wanted to launch, uh, many online programs that we've wanted to share to the community. And we've held them back for one, two and three years because we don't want to overwhelm the community. And, you know, we've got so many things to do. We don't want to get too overwhelmed. Like, no, let's get them done now. Let's get them all done. I feel like in the last week I've been in a constant state of overwhelm, but that's created 
energy, enthusiasm, like a, a, a relentless productivity, so momentum, velocity, resilience, all these things that you need. Um, and you know, from time to time, you kind of worry about rejection or you worry about um, asking for things. Well, in this, in this economy, in this climate that we're in, surely that just all goes. And surely you just do what you've got to do. Surely none of it matters anymore. Um, and I think it's good to get into that position where you're like, all right, it's very real now. I do it or I really do believe it's the quick and the dead. Um, uh, and as such, I think that you just you just bash through it. You just get the stuff done um, because really there shouldn't be any excuses right now. Right. So I'm going to go on over to my page and see what questions we've got coming in here. Um, tougher times make tougher people. This is Jamie. That's very true. You build your resilience, your grit, your knowledge, your experience, your yeah. health. Your yes. immunity, yeah. exercise, food, sleep, all that stuff. Now is the time to be doing that so that you can really power through this and, and you know, sort all the things out that are going to change in your business and, and you, know, your, your, you, you need to sort of modify to make sure they still work because the world has changed um, and also take advantage of learning how the new world operates. Um, those, those two things are so much more possible when you eat well, you sleep, and you exercise and build that immunity. And what Mark said as well, new world. This is a new world. The old rules don't ap apply. So some people were saying to me, well, Rob, you know, you talk about your 70, 20, 10, and I don't want to get too overwhelmed, and I, I don't want to do too many things. I don't want to learn too many things. I want to take my time. I want to do it progressively. I just think you just that's the old world you got to do twice as much three times as much some people are saying to me exactly some people are saying to me like oh well you know should i get into e-commerce right now well surely the next three to six months is the perfect time to get into e-commerce uh, and if you've got a lot of stuff going on you've just got to add more to it and more to it mark is managing an eighty-five thousand square foot property project right now and he's doing these live streams and getting him back involved in the training at, business i'm a builder he's got his, he's, a builder. Builder. <laughs> he's got his work boots on he's a, a a young dad looking after his son as well um i i'm getting more involved in uh, our training courses and and products and i'm doing what probably three times as much content i'm taking every public speaking gig that we're getting given um because now, some people are saying, oh, look, this time, it's time to spend with your family and your friends. And I actually agree that we should connect more with our family and friends in this time. But I do not agree that it's a time just to sit in for 12 weeks with your friends and your family. One, because business cap goes on. And all right, maybe there might be a few people in the, the public sector that are going to get their full salary paid, but probably not that many. Um, I think it's the time to double down and to... Um, see this as the big pendulum swing in the 2008 recession mark and i were worried we didn't we'd never been there before okay we'd read books but what does that mean it's good to have knowledge but it's better to experience it um and a lot of our competitors went bust and there were big competitors there were big developers massive developers there were big training companies and new build overseas and off-plan property sellers huge um, 200 million pound companies or nearly that um, valued and then a month later, going bust, worth nothing. And it was a wobbly time, but because Mark and I were fairly young, quite starting out, lean, we didn't have a huge overhead. We were left and not many others were. And that ended up being a great time for us. It ended up being a great level. It was like everyone was starting again when we were starting again. And like snakes and ladders, we were on square five. There was people on square 95. They went down the biggest snake on the board back to square one and we went up to square 21 just by virtue of being lean, agile, liquid. Now, Mark, a lot of people have been asking, so this is a good one to address. Right now, should I be buying a property? Um, because there's people looking at buying their homes, there's people that are looking at buying buy-to-let. Should they be really liquid and hold cash? Should they buy a property? Is the market going to go down further? What are your thoughts? Well, clearly the market has already shifted. Um, you know, sellers, probably most of them won't accept that or, or most of them won't uh, admit that. Um, but, you know, the market will have shifted. So I think if you've got a transaction already going through, um, lots of people say, oh, never pull out of a, a purchase, um, which, you know, which, which is true, your reputation is important. But the price you agreed it at pre, 
pre sort of the coronavirus event um, and now were different. So you probably want to renegotiate. And I think that's a, a, a sort of, you know, I'm not talking about doing it the night before that you're due to move, you know, and, and it's there's a residential sort of homeowner expecting to move out and you, you screw that up. But certainly on investment purchases or investment vendors, um, it's probably time to renegotiate. Um, and uh, I, I suspect a lot of them will be a lot more renegotiable. I was, um, I was on the bu our building site this morning um, and you know I've got various options. I don't know if you know we're going to go through a period where the government stops us going on site for a bit and we have to close sites, whatever, but I'm, pay I'm placing packages um, with various suppliers at the moment um, and I'm sort of quite early on. Um, I'm just sort of doing a bit of demolition at the moment um, and some waterproofing and things like that. But a lot of these packages haven't been placed yet. Now clearly we've had them priced um, and I'm already testing um, how these guys are, you know, and we, we, I, won't, I won't name what package it is, what sort of subcontract package, it's a big one. Um, but you know, the, 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 the guy probably a week, sorry, a month, six weeks ago um, was uh, you know, playing pretty hardball, you know, going hard on the negotiations and, you know, I want these terms and all the rest of it. Uh, he's softened rather a lot in the last two weeks um, and the raw material that will be used for his package, uh, the value of it has reduced significantly. So all I'm saying is, you know, and I've got another set of guys who are, you know, working away uh, and you can just see how you know, because sites are closing, you know, building sites are closing across the country, you can see already um, how they're suddenly going to probably work a lot harder, um, probably at better rates, um, you know, pay them, uh, be, be honest with them, uh, but, you know, anything that hasn't been placed and all that is going to be renegotiated. Um, and this is, this is the point at which it happens. So, um, I'm not saying you know you're suddenly going to get loads and loads of money off all these prices because that, that takes a bit of time to play out. But you know, it, I think it's a valid and and and, and sort of um, you know it's something it's survival of the fittest and it's something you're going to need to do uh, for your 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 portfolio um, because um, you know if they go back out to the market they're probably going to get less now. Someone has made a comment that um, our distancing is not far enough. <laughs> We've probably already given it if we've got it. I think, have, I think I've had it. Yeah, we have to be clo this close for the, for the live stream, but thank you for thinking of us. Uh, now look, this is short term. Now whatever short term means, it's still short term. We're gonna look back in a year or three or five or 10 and realize this was uh, an of the moment thing. So does it matter? if you don't buy another property for four weeks and the prices drop a bit? No. Are you going to lose anything? No. So what can you do in this time? You can listen to all the Progressive Property podcasts. You can read all the property, Progressive Property books. You can listen to all the Progressive Property audio books. You can do all the online uh, and the support of, um, content and programs we have at Progressive Property. And you can triple down on your education. Most people up until this virus were very busy. And you know when you think about learning something new, what's your main objection? I haven't got time. And I know there's loads of things I would love to learn and do if I could hit the pause button, be given four, eight, 12 weeks free time to learn them in a deep dive, intense, intensely focused way to then be able to start almost on day zero to hit the ground running. Well, this is the scenario now. You can learn virtually in time freedom. Because let's be honest, four, eight, 12 weeks, the transaction volume is going to go down. The prices are likely to go down. You're not really going to miss out on anything per se, because all the world is on pause. And I think this is the perfect opportunity to immerse yourself, almost like do a university degrees worth of education, information, mentoring, masterminding, and just learning as much as you can, such that when we're all unquarantined, when the market starts to move again, the economy starts to reduce in friction, you will hit the ground running. So surely this is a great time to, to leverage this time and this opportunity. Uh, now, that was his wedding ring. That was his wedding ring. Don't lose that, Mark. Um, <laughs> 
So uh, perfect opportunity to talk to you about the new Progressive Property Supporter Programme we've launched. So we're reacting to this market as quick as we can, offering you access to resources, materials, training, etc. cetera, um, for, um, we're gonna be actually launching quite a few things in, in the coming weeks, but this thing is probably our best value. Uh, now I launched my Rob Moore Supporter Programme almost a year ago. Um, it's just three forty nine a month, which is the cost of one cup of co- coffee, well, my cup of coffee, um, per month, so it's three forty nine. But in the Progressive Supporter Programme, you get an Ask Me Anything Live with Mark every month. Now, Mark's information is, is very valuable. It's very scarce because he very rarely comes and does public appearances. But Mark has agreed through the duration of this difficult time and you know this potential quarantine and isolation to come out more and share more content and help you in your community along your journey. Um, you're also going to get every two weeks and ask me anything love one of our lead trainers. You get two for one on some of our uh, property courses and you can, ba- you can bank them uh, for, for when you can actually go out and do them live. We've got a thousand pieces of video content in our Progressive Property membership site and you're gonna get all of this for free. And any online trainings and webinars we do um, that we don't usually share the recordings of, you're gonna get those free. You're gonna get all of that for just 3.49 a month. So here's the link, because you'll need it. Um, And the link is bit.ly forward slash PP supporter. Um, But the PP is a capital PP. So it's bit.ly forward slash PP supporter. I'm going to put that in the comments with a capital PP. I'll put it on my page as well. Let's put it here. Uh, now, we're doing all of this for just three forty nine a month because we want to support you through these challenging times and give you as much content as we physically can. Um, we have nearly 2,500 people on my supporter program. I think the progressive one will grow bigger. Um, so, you know, while you've got time, while you're at home, while you've got space, Um, Make sure you don't get distracted by watching conspiracy theory YouTube videos, which would be very easy to do right now and educate yourself as much as you can. All right, great. Um, Jennifer said, have you considered getting into the delivery distribution business? I like your entrepreneurial thinking. Mark and I only really like to do what we know. Um, And because this, I believe, is quite short term, i.e. three months, six months, 12 months, I want to think, do I want to be in that business afterwards? Now, if I started an e-commerce business, would I want to be in online selling afterwards? Of course I would. I mean, the internet is the future, so that might be something I jump into now. But do I want to be in delivery and distribution? I don't. Do I want to be selling toilet rolls? I don't. Um, So I think as, as well as getting into opportunity, which is vital right now, I think it's important to understand what would you want to also do afterwards. All right, let's go back into the progressive community and see what, we've got a lot of people on these lives, Mark, so uh, they've all come out to see you. Uh, All right, we've just got loads of people tagging themselves in on that one. If you've got any questions, um, please do put them in the comments. It's weird on the live, Ben, because you can see about four or five comments only. Um, And then when when someone posts a comment, it bumps another one away. So, hey, look, it's I'm just telling you, it's not nothing that you've one done. Proof, one proof. Um, yeah, look, you see, I can only see four. Oh. Yeah, um, honestly, have a look. They'll, they'll, yeah, have a look. They'll keep coming in. It's all right. Um, what's the Rob Moore coffee of choice to order? Medium skinny cappuccino, Sorry, extra I'm shot. Just, I'm just telling you. Obviously, that was vital information for these disruptive times of the virus. So I bet you. Uh, I bet you can survive and thrive now in these times. Uh, that Costa Coffee has really helped me. Although they're not taking cash anymore because they don't want to spread the virus. They're only taking contactless payments. The drive through is still open. If they, if they shut, uh, that might be the end of me. Just warning you, Mark, you might not see me anymore. Um, Adam misses your face. Hi, Carl, Carl and Adam. Uh, two great guys that used to work with us at Progressive. Lovely to see you on the live streams. Um, okay, uh, do you think um, interest rates might go negative? This is one for you, well, Mr. Uh, Economist. It, um, so the governor has said, I think this morning, that he doesn't favour that. Obviously, they've gone down to 0.1%. Um, he, apparently, he's used almost half of his firepower. Um, so they've obviously reduced interest rates. They, they're doing 200 billion extra worth of quantitative easing. Uh, and they're now talking about uh, using printing money to 
uh, basically provide to the government for government spending, which is something they haven't done before. Uh, but clearly that will create, uh, or, or, or should I say, it will reduce deflation. Uh, so it will create some inflation. That's the idea. Um, so I think they're going to do that first. Um, I haven't seen negative interest rate. I think there's some mortgages in, in Denmark um, that are negative. Um, clearly that's not the intention now, but um, who knows what they're going to do. They're going to have to keep going until they sort this thing um, and, and use everything they can because otherwise the... Um, you know, the, 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 there'll be too much, there'll be too, too much sort of downward pressure on the economy. Their tax revenues will suffer. Um, you know, and, and, and there will be, uh, it will be a really bad situation. So, um, anything's possible. Uh, and for all of you who've got tracker mortgages, uh, Rob and I have got quite a few. In fact, we've got quite a few right back from sort of 06, 05. Uh, that just track Bank of England base rate. Obviously, they've all gone down a lot. Uh, I suspect you can get a residential mortgage rate for absolutely bugger all now. I mean, there was sort of one and a half percent. Um, I haven't looked in the last sort of three weeks, but you get one at one and a half percent when the base was 0.75. So I don't know. What are they now? 0.75? Yeah. Do you remember we had a 9p mortgage in the last recession? Yeah. Oh, the, uh, the 9p, you know, interest only mortgage. We've still got that mortgage. Have we? Yeah, yeah. Is it still 9p? No, it will be now. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll happen again. There's yeah. always an upside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another announcement I need to make. So I've just put all the information about the new Progressive Property Supporter Program, which is just three forty nine a month. We are the first training company in the UK by a stretch. It'll be six to twelve months before any other training company can offer this. Three pound forty nine for all that value. I've put um, all the content, all the um, the benefits of the supporter program in the thread, so you can have a look at that. Um, but what we've done. Um, we've obviously had to postpone some events and we've postponed a couple of multiple streams of property income events. And I'd said to you um, that we were going to do some last ever ones in April. Well, the first one in April is definitely postponed. So what we're going to do is an emergency online equivalent of multiple streams of property income. Mm. It will be a couple of evenings, probably next week. So as a supporter, you're going to get that for free. If you were on an initial um, or you were originally a booked on a multiple streams of property income, you're going to be moved over onto that live one online and you'll get your ticket moved to later in the year. Um, but if you do want a place on this emergency uh, multiple streams of property income live stream, of course, we'll adapt the content for the new world that we're in, work on the right cash flow strategies and work on what you can do right now to take advantage of the situation. But if you join the Progressive Property Supporter Program, you'll be able to get a, a ticket to that live stream. We won't be offering it to the public. It won't be to everyone because it's a replacement for multiple streams of property income. So the link is bit.ly forward slash PP supporter with a capital P and a capital P. Um, so make sure you jump on that. Um, we are trying our best to react to these disruptive times. So we're creating more and more resources every day, more online training, more online masterminding and online mentoring and online resources and online courses. Um, so in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doubling down on the um, free content that we do for you, the Ask Me Anything lives, the videos. I'm doing about three times the free content um, that I've been doing. So you can uh, certainly get a lot of that. And also, you know, the hardcore deep dive education, you know, the stuff that you're actually going to be able to build a strategy around and go out and implement. We're going to be launching some of those to you coming soon as well. All right, um, let's have a look at some of the questions coming in. Um, hi, Rob and Mark. Will you potentially be considering requesting extended credit from any of your suppliers? I mean, that's, a, that's obviously a, ge a generic business question. Um, personally, I think it's a case by case. Um, I think you do have to be liquid and protect the cash. You know, we have a lot of clients at Progressive Property and we have to serve them. And um, we are, um, any events that people miss, we are also adding them on later so they're not losing out on any events. So for people who are on mastermind and mentoring programs with us, we're adding them on, um, you know, if, we, if they miss one, add it on at the end of the year. If they miss two, add two on, three, add three on. That's going to be an overhead expense to us. And we're replacing the ones that we add on with online, if that's what the, the, the mastermind group or the clients want. So actually, we're offering even more value and serving our clients even more. And we're taking, you know, obviously the overhead hit on that. 
Now, Mark and I have done our best to stay as liquid as possible. I've liquidated a lot, uh, a lot of personal assets, not all, but a decent amount that um, wasn't necessarily initially planning to do, because I think it's really important to stay liquid. The important thing with this also, it, it, it's a really good idea to be, to be liquid. Um, however, not paying for things um, which you know, are due um, has two sides to it. You, clearly, you may get interest and other charges on top. But the other thing is, you're then still going to owe that money at the end of this period. So, you know, unless you're sort of right up against the wall, um, you know, and you, you don't want double bubble, uh, in a few months' time, where you've got all those bills to cover and you know the the, the sort of new bills to cover, um, then you know you, you you may not want to do that. Um, but um, yeah, a lot yeah. of people are just going to kick a load of debt down the road, aren't they? Exactly. I mean, you, yeah. um, I mean it's a bit like this thing, you know, the, the tenants. Exactly. Talk so about that. so, <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn, John Manolka. Oh well, what about tenants? Mortgage mortgage um, holders are going to get a three month. Um, it's not a payment holiday, really, um, but clearly, you know, it, in some ways, the tenants are all ringing up, thinking that, uh, or, or some tenants are ringing up. The ones that don't often um, pay. Anyway, that's our yeah. experience in our letting agency. That they're the ones we've been hearing from, saying, um, "Oh, I don't have to pay my rent for three months." No, it's not quite that simple. They still owe the money, um, and what the government is saying is there'll be no ed eviction proceedings started for three months. But clearly, on month four, um, if they haven't paid, then they'll still owe all those four months worth of rent and eviction proceedings will just start at that point. So if they've got the money, it's actually better just to continue paying. Uh, and it's, you know, with your mortgage, I think they're going to let you go potentially on to interest only uh, for a period. Uh, Barclays have said that maybe for 12 months. Um, and p potentially, if you're in financial difficulty, a three month payment holiday uh, or not a payment holiday but you defer those payments until later um, you know it's a bit of a double-edged sword um, you know you've got lenders there um, if they're definitely not going to give you adverse credit uh, and you, you, know, you haven't got loads of money maybe you'd consider it but you know, is that a great thing to be sort of saying to your lender especially if you want to borrow more money from them at some point in the future Okay, a couple of things. One person has said it's probably time to sell your Lego set because some people won't have much to do. Actually, I bought quite a lot of Lego as an investment. I should check if that's gone up or not. Uh, thank you for that one. Um, uh, the general consensus I can get for quite a lot of questions I can put into one section is, you know, how is lending right now? Is, has lending got easier, worse, no different? What are you, what's I, your experience? I, I d my experience is nothing seems to have changed yet, but I think it will change. Um, but I think the lenders are still working out what they're doing. I did speak to a surveyor a day or two ago and he just said, well, obviously there's not been any comparable evidence for stuff that's sold since this issue came along. So for him, I think he was just updating his valuation reports with the risk of coronavirus and what that could do to property values. And, but then he still goes off the evidence that he's seen sort of recently. So. Um, I think it's a little bit early to be uh, sort of working out how the lenders are have modified their sort of terms and, and what they're offering people because uh, I think they're still working out, most so of them. If people are like us with our letting agency having tenants trying to get um, relief from paying, you know, quoting the three month, um, you know, um, rental holiday, you know, you're probably hearing that quite a lot. How would a landlord cope and deal with that? Uh, I think the first thing is anyone who hasn't paid, um, you need to get on them very, very quickly to work out, you know, why they haven't paid. Remind them that they're still going to owe the money at the end of the three months. Um, and I think just sort of stay on them, be very, very efficient in collecting that money. Because actually a lot of people can pay and they're still in work, clearly. Um, but some people will use it um, as a, a sort of excuse not to pay. There will be genuine cases of people who are in financial hardship uh, and clearly then um, you can probably go to your mortgage lender, that's my understanding, and say, look, this tenant on this property has a problem paying me because you know, maybe they've lost their job or the company's not paying them. Therefore, can I get a, a sort of deferment or go on interest only or whatever for the next three months? And that applies, that will apply to buy to let and investment mortgages as well. Um, so I, I think they're the sort of things that you want to be focusing on um, with your tenants um, if you're having sort of any payment or, or sort of rental income issues with them. 
Just while I refresh and get the next load of questions, is there anything you feel is relevant to talk about that's going on in the property market? Obviously, you're doing a big development. What are you experiencing? Anything that you think is going on in the media that everyone should know about in our community? Um, yeah, I mean, clearly, you know, people are getting ready to sort of do less and, and do more at home and, and go online, you know, and, and, and sort of work in a virtual environment. So laptop sales have gone absolutely crazy. Um, and, and, you know, all the professionals, I don't know, surveyors and architects and all that lot there, Sort of home gym equipment's gone uh, wild. Gone wild. Wild. And, and um, they're all doing Zoom meetings with me now. Um, so we're, we're online doing these sort of Zoom meetings, uh, big design team meetings. Maybe there's five, six, seven of them all on one call. Um, I am meeting an architect next week, but we're going to distance. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, he's, he's happy to come out. But actually, I did ask a... Um, a structural engineer that I used a number of years ago on, on these buildings and on some of our other developments and I tried to get him out because I need to get him for a warranty company and he just said um, I, I just feel I'm too old I'm in I'm in a sort of risk group and I don't do the survey so you know I'm having to go to sort of younger people to get stuff like that done which is fair enough um, and um, you know just don't go near them um, and and sort of practice the distancing and um, just follow Boris's advice and try try and you know sort of if you don't have to go into work, um, if you can sort of avoid others and, and then then that's what I've been doing. So um, it, it's still very early to see sort of what's happening in terms of property prices or lenders, um, but I'm seeing what's happening with men and suppliers, and you can see uh, that they are coming closer and closer and closer. I remember this: 08, 09, 10. Um, you could get building work done really cheap. There's going to be, at the end of this, there's going to be cheap property, cheap businesses, there's going to be a lot of cheap assets, or at least I feel that there is, none of us can obviously predict for sure. I mean, it could, you, you never completely know, and it could just go like that, yeah. um, but it, it just feels like um, it, it isn't going to be quite that quick. Um, it, but There's always a it, lag, isn't there? There's always a lag. Uh, and people have to, you know, industries have to sort of get going again. People have to get going and all that sort of stuff. Um, will it go on as long as last time? Well, you know, nobody really knows that. But if there's um, enough support uh, and, you know, people sort of really focus, um, then, then it won't do. I, I, I think the big thing is also this is quite industry specific. Uh, I was talking to another friend yesterday who is watching hotels like a hawk. Um, you know, you, you have a sort of 20 million pound hotel in London, they have 10 million pounds worth of debt on it, they've got no bookings over the spring and the summer. Um, you get to September when, you know, potentially that, that may be when it, you know, things pick up in that industry again uh, properly. Um, you know, are they going to be able to wait that long? Uh, and um, so there's going to be a lot of opportunities there, you know, with, with those sorts of units. A lot of Airbnb people are going to switch to the rental market now, so you want to get get that done quick uh, if you're looking to do that because especially in London I think there's going to be lots of um, you know lots of people sort of switching over so you just need to work out what the new models are work out you know how to make money in the new environment um, and um, you know you'll, you'll you'll be fine and, and and actually you'll do very very well you'll set yourself up for many years very common question here so I can collate quite a few of these essentially boils down to would you refinance or would you pull access to cash if you can right now? Um, so I'll just give you my view yeah. really quickly. I would, um, if you can get, as long as you can get relatively good rates and you're not giving away massive personal guarantees and taking big risks, um, I feel like being liquid right now is smart um, because A, you've got burn rate in case the world just completely closes down. You can continue your education, which I think is vital, and see you'll have some buying power for... Yeah, um, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why would you not? Yeah, yeah. Don't buy liabilities, don't no. buy material items that will go down. Investments, education, anything that's going to help you when, you, when we come out of this, um, hit the ground running. Um, it's weird also, different things have happened. I get, you know, the, the favourite question, I just want to say this, the favourite question that I always get every time we're doing one of these is when's the next recession and for the last few years I've just sort of said it's it's the wrong question um, you cannot predict when the next recession is going to come because 
it is usually caused by a black swan. It is usually caused by something that uh, well, people I'd didn't argue foresee. It, it always must be, otherwise you could it wouldn't happen would well it? usually policy makers and you know the public or, or not the public but investors or whatever if they can see something is a risk then usually it's changed or you know they, they don't go down that road um so you know here we are clearly the market was you know we were in the second half i kept saying that uh we got closer and closer to 11 o'clock um and you know the the um you know there's been this big shift uh, so it, it, yeah, this is this is the black swan, um, which happens every few years. And it's like, how do you prepare for what you can't prepare for? How do you plan for something that blindsides you? That's a paradox because you can't, but you can. So some things Mark's always said to me is, you know, make sure you retain cash, make sure you stay relatively liquid, make sure you never spend more than you earn. That was my point. Make sure I'll, I'll chuck you back in a minute. Um, make sure that uh, you don't over gear and over leverage yourself. So whilst you can't plan for what you can't plan for, you can plan for what you can't plan for because you can be liquid um, and because you can pivot um, and because you can be agile and because you can not be over geared. Um, and so I, you know, I sold a fair few of my ISAs. Uh, and, you know, I never planned to sell my ISAs ever. That was just, you put your money in your ISA, you leave it there forever, you live off it one day. Um, but I just thought it was better to have the cash than have it in the ISA. And of course, if the, if the market goes down and, you know, another load, well, I probably better got it in cash. And because I can't use it to trade my way out while it's in an ISA, I can only use it to trade my way out when I'm in, in cash. So, yeah, anyway, you said you were going to, you said you remember yes. something. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, very interesting. Um, you'll speak to lots of financial advisors and lots of people who um, would say that um, gold and uh, US government bonds, treasuries, uh, or UK government bonds, gilts, um, are the things that you invest in uh, in the normal times, uh, you put a per percentage of your wealth in, in those because when the bad times come and all of your shares drop massively, as they have done in recent weeks, bonds and gold usually go up. Well, that isn't what happened this time. Uh, bonds, uh, the value of them has dropped significantly, uh, you know, really, really sort of safe bonds. And, and so is gold because there has been such an extreme dash for cash. Uh, and people have been selling to, to meet margin calls um, very, very quickly. So uh, who knows, you know, the, the, there may be some, you know, as we get out of, into the sort of, this progresses, maybe then gold will start appreciating and, and, and bonds and everything. But the point there is... But we've never had a virus only, before, have no, we? So no, you can't plan no, for it. The, the point there is the only thing that is really, really liquid is cash. Um, and I think you probably want to spread that cash around as well. Um, you know, look at the banks that you're putting it in. Um, to, you know, to, to, I, I, I think your savings, you probably want to keep them in three or four. I'm not saying all the banks are going bust. You know, I, I, I don't believe that to be the case, but you could see one or two of them uh, needing to raise more capital at the least. Um, you know, and, and you probably don't want to have your money there, especially when you're earning half a percent. So I've had a few questions about service accommodation that uh, some people feel that industry has been hit quite hard. Um, some people may be struggling with that yeah. now. Um, Mark and I do a bit of that, but not a huge amount. Um, but on our Progressive Property Supporter Programme, the first deep dive Ask Me Anything live is going to be with Kevin Paneskis, who's our resident service accommodation trainer, who's got a lot of service accommodations himself. Um, so I would jump on that with him to ask all the service accommodation related questions. So the link is bit.com ly forward slash pp supporter with a capital two p's i've just put the links again in the live stream so for just the cost of a cup of coffee a month um, you're getting one ask me anything live every month with mark you're getting one every two weeks with our lead trainers and kevin paneskis who's our lead trainer for service accommodation he's doing that i think it might even be monday it's very quick because obviously that industry it's not all downside by the way but that industry has been probably disrupted the hardest you would say in the property world there are opportunities there definitely are. there yeah big opportunities if they're not there now there there are going to be serious opportunities there shortly yeah uh, so I've had a few questions about, um, yeah, so the Progressive Property Support Program for all the service accommodation questions. Because remember, if you've got a flat and it's sort of C3 use class, 
um, you know, and you switched it to service accommodation, you can rent it out. You've got options. If someone's got a hotel, it's C1. They can't just rent that out on a sort of AST, six monthly basis. Um, you know, there's, things are going to change there. Yeah, and, and what are the buying opportunities when you come out at the end of this? So, you know, you have to react fast, you have to protect your cash, you have to make sure you, 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 you get your debt covered. Um, you have, probably have to accept the fact that the profits that you predicted, it's not really, I'm not going to say it's not about making profit now, it's always about making profit. Of course, it's also about serving people. Um, but right now, I think you've just got to imagine that all of your previous plans are changed. And to be honest, um, if we went six months, uh, and our cash didn't go down, and our profitability was about net zero. Well, that wouldn't be a bad result. I'd, you know, obviously, I, I'd be very pleased with yeah, that. I yeah, I wouldn't be unhappy with that. And the thing is, markets and you know your wealth—they're not linear at all. And so I, I think you assume, or you think, or you hope that they're going to steadily go up. Um, but actually, um, what happens is, I listened to something yesterday from an. an a, an expert analyst, and he said that um, for you to get your annualized 9% return in the market, that's only 40 positive days in the year. Yeah. Um, and so actually, your good days are few and far between, but often they're big. Um, and often, you say this, Mark, don't you? A lot of the time, you've got to sit on your hands and almost just do not much or just stay in the game. It's what you don't invest in as well as what you do invest in that makes the money. And look, if you were to buy, say, five properties a year, that would not be a bad year. That's five days where you complete on a property. That's 360 days where you don't complete on a property. So, you know, you have your ebbs and flows and your highs and your lows and, and your roller coaster. Mm. And so the way I've got this in my head is, because like, I've, I've liquidated some watches, I've liquidated some ISAs, I've liquidated some investments that I hadn't really planned to liquidate. And in my head, it's just like, well, now it's just got to be cash. And so that's just the way it is. Um, and I took a hit on some of my investments. It's, do you know, it's the first time I think I've, I've, I've liquidated uh, and crystallized a loss since 2005. Um, but it was always going to happen one day. I knew that. And if you need cash, you need cash. Um, all right. So it says live video interrupted, Ben. Are we still live? Seems to be. Yeah. Which one are you on? Okay. Uh, it's just come back. So that's good. So let me refresh. See if we've got any more questions. We've got six minutes left, by the way. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope we've managed to get many of your questions answered. Um, just a quick one, Mark. Try and do 30 seconds. Lisa has asked, which banks are risky? Um, I, I was looking at that this morning, actually. Um, go on Fitch uh, and have a look at their credit ratings. Um, I, I don't want to sort of... Um, you know, say this bank's you know particularly bad or whatever, but I, a lot of these sort of foreign names you've never heard of. Um, I, well, I what about what's the, what the safest? Maybe that's I, the. I think a lot of the sort of. Barclays, I remember last. Well, West they got. Recently. Yeah, I mean, spread them around those sort of big, big sort of clearing banks. Uh, Metro, I don't think I'd be anywhere near them. Um, okay, I'd probably you know. Um, and a lot of the, you know, the, the, the building societies who don't go and do racy things and just have a load of savers and, and, and lend money on a, uh, you know, a sensible basis to homeowners. Um, there's loads of those sort of regional building societies uh, which are probably fine. And actually, you know, the big banks are very well capitalised in general, um, you know, because they've, the government's made them do it since the last recession. So someone has asked, what if people haven't really got many assets to liquidate? Um, I'll answer quickly and then if you want to add anything, Mark. Well, I actually think the biggest advantage for now is someone who's agile and lean and doesn't have much overhead. Um, and honestly, who's got the best opportunity right now? Someone with maybe not much capital but no overhead or someone with some capital but a huge overhead, the, probably the startup, because this is almost like history repeating for us mm. in 2008. Yeah. I remember in 2008, you and I didn't need more than five grand between us to live a half decent life, yeah. you had a. You were still living with your mum, weren't you? Mm. I had I Road, and which was yeah. a, a small mortgage. And to us, five grand shared, that was quite a lot of money. You could afford a nice car, you could go out and whatever. So we were really liquid. Sorry, we were really agile. We had virtually no overhead. And, and companies that had millions of pounds overhead, even if they had millions of pounds in cash, but they had millions in overhead. So those of you that can't liquidate, just stay agile and stay lean. Save your money for investing in education and assets and do not really spend it on anything else and just protect what you've got and just keep your overhead really low. Would you add anything? Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I think that um, you, you, more than ever, you need to get, I know we can't go out, but you need to sort of talk to people and talk to clever people and surround yourself with the people who are working out where these opportunities are, what's changed, how to fix all the issues, because you'll have a load of things popping if you've got a business at the moment. Um, you just need all those people around you uh, and you need to sort of act quickly. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to invest quickly uh, because the opportunities aren't necessarily there. E-commerce, they definitely are there. Um, but um, yeah, you, you've got to open your mind during this period and be ready to receive. So real, real privilege to have Mark on this live stream. Um, Mark's going to be doing this monthly on uh, the Progressive Property Supporter Programme. Um, if you have any questions that we've missed, try and tag us in on the thread. We'll do our best. We are obviously very busy right now. Every time I check my WhatsApp, it's gone wild. Stay vigilant. Stay away from critics, trolls, haters and punks right now. They're out in force. There's people who will criticise you for making a living. Just uh, don't get involved in debates and arguments. Gently unfollow. Gently block. Don't make an announcement. Hang around positive, inspiring people. I've been WhatsApping all my business friends, just saying, hey, look, how are you getting on? Is there anything I can help you with? Should we have a call and talk about best practice? What are you doing? How are you handling this situation? So I um, spoke to Neville Wright yesterday. I'm speaking to a couple of my other business friends coming soon. Dave Ravenscroft had a message from him yesterday. He's having to make some changes. We're all having to pivot fast. Stay around those kind of people. Protect your energy, your enthusiasm, your passion, your drive. Uh, create new products and services for this um, pivoting, disruptive time. Make sure that you, you know, you've got to go the extra mile. We'll tell you when it's time to leverage. We'll tell you when you can create passive income. But now it's active income and it's about getting more done to get through this time. So thanks for tuning in uh, to these uh, multi-live streams. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.